All right. So I have a pretty specific need for a different kind of silver cell. So I'd like to show you what I'm working on. I took a piece of stainless steel and I cut it to fit inside of a five liter beaker. And now I'm marking a location where I'm gonna bend the metal to do two things. Hold the anode basket and also connect to the negative leads on the DC power supply. So I've marked the location that after I bend the metal over, the hole should line up in the very center of the beaker to hold the anode basket. So next I measure a, a one half inch and then I'm going to make a mark down each side of the metal plate and that way I've got a line that I can cut down. These two tabs that I cut are going to become the negative leads. I mentioned a little bit ago about a special need for this silver cell and I'd like to explain that a little bit. What I've done is I've taken 200 grams of the silver and I've alloyed into it some zirconium that I'm currently mining from my property in Wisconsin. And I'm less concerned about the silver that we're refining in this process as I am the slimes that are going to be inside the anode basket. So ultimately I'll be refining the slimes from the anode basket and with some help from the Almighty I might find a way to refine the zirconium without having to use the crawl process which is incredibly expensive and I think it'd be a lot of fun to run some experiments and see if there isn't a way that we can't refine the zirconium without the crawl process. So here I'm using an aspirator bottle with a 2440 outlet at the bottom and I'm going to use this for the anode basket. So we're going to cover the outlet at the bottom with a Dacron filter. And then we'll just use a zip tie here to secure it into place. And I found it's easiest to um, get the zip tie kind of tight fitting around the outer rim of the bottom outlet. And then you'll want to take the filter and lay it across and then slide the zip tie over it. That way you've got the ability to pull the filter itself pretty tight. And then as I got the first zip tie fairly tight around the neck, I'm going to add a second zip tie to the base of the neck just for an extra precaution. And now that the Dacron filter is fastened to the aspirator bottle, I will trim off the tabs and then um, off camera here, I'm just gonna trim up the rest of the filter. So now that we have the cell prepared, mostly prepared, it's time to make some electrolyte. So I'm taking some glass stir rods because I'm gonna be dissolving some silver coins um, in nitric acid here and the glass stir rods at the bottom of the beaker will just help keep the coins off the bottom so the acid can attack the metal from all sides so they just don't lay flat on the bottom of the glass. I'm also testing the one millimeter per gram of metal to dissolve. So I have 318 grams of pure silver that I'll be using to make my electrolyte. So I'm going to use, I'm going to measure out 318 milliliters of nitric acid.
all 318 milliliters of nitric acid are in, and we're down to stirring in the last few pieces of coins into the glass rods while they dissolve, and the process completes. And here you can see that we're down to no fragments of metal left at all. So we'll test the solution to see if we have any free nitric left in it. But first I'll filter it using a number two filter paper. I find it absolutely fascinating that there's three quarters of a pound of metal in that clear liquid. And now that we've filtered the electrolyte, we'll transfer it over into a storage beaker. And now here, I want to check to see that um, there isn't any free nitric left in this electrolyte. So I'm going to weigh out exactly one gram of pure silver crystal. And then we're going to add this crystal into a test tube and then add some additional electrolyte that we made in the in the boil to this test tube and we'll let it sit for approximately seven hours and we'll see if the weight of the silver crystal has changed at all I'm anticipating if there's free nitric left in this solution that the silver crystals weight should be reduced by some so we've left the silver crystal in the electrolyte for seven hours at room temperature and now I'd like to get a weight on this so we'll dry it off on a glass slide that I've weighed out on the scale and teared and we'll bring it over to the scale here and we'll see that we've got 1.06 grams and there is some dried silver on the the glass slide but I did weigh this off camera and I did come up with 1.01 grams now we should have everything we need to assemble the silver cell. So first I will wipe everything down with acetone to get any oils, fingerprints off of the glass and all of the equipment. Next I'll add approximately 400 grams of impure silver shot that is roughly 98% silver and 2% other base metals. Next, we'll need to lower the cathode, anode, tree thing that I built. We'll need, I'll need somebody to come up with a name for this. I'm not sure what to call it, but the cathode, anode, tree is what I'll call it for now. Um, so we'll lower that into the electrolyte. And the goal here is to have the electrolyte level equal to about halfway of the Dacron filter opening. So I can adjust that electrolyte level with some of the electrolyte that I have left um, that I didn't add initially. And I'm, you can see it in the beaker behind. I have about 150 milliliters of electrolyte remaining. Here you can see a little better how the aspirator bottle hangs on the cathode with a slot that I've cut into the opening. And now it's time to hook up our leads. We'll put the negative leads onto the cathode the stainless steel bar and I poured a pure three nines fine um, silver bar off camera and I'm using that as my anode bar and I've bent it a little bit so I can make better contact as I lower it into the aspirator bottle let's turn it on and see how she goes